Beep, beep, everybody. Well, here we are at Big Valley Antique Center, which is off the Milroy exit of 322. And um, this is a really large building from the outside. And as you can see, it has the word antiques. And where it says antiques is where you want to go into the place. And this is what a typical um, hallway looks like in here. And this, we're on the second floor. I always start on the second floor when I go to this place. And our first stop is uh, along that hallway. And they have usually about one little box of cards. Um, but I like to go through this booth because they have a lot of... Uh, toys and neat stuff to look at and here you'll see some uh, Star Trek uh, next generation action figures and there's a Borg head and some trolls and um, there's some Star Trek trading cards and a robot of some sort. I don't know what that is. And like every antique mall in Pennsylvania, they have Hot Wheels cars. <laughs> and this will give you an idea of the kind of interesting stuff that you could look at when you're here. And there's a time tube. And a Close Encounters uh, board game. Some more like loose cars. And uh, there's like a, I don't know what this is. It's like a mini uh, video game of asteroids. And there's like some uh, uh, Harry Potter currency. I don't know if those are homemade or what they are. It's not something I collect. There's a Tom Seaver. In action from 72 in this case. And there's uh, some vinyl records. And just to, beyond that wall there um, are all these cards in these bins. Uh, one, one is particularly focused on the pirates. And they have a bulletin board here that has a number of cards. Uh, there, there's some vintage in here, um, plus some modern. It's kind of a big mix of stuff. You see some 1971 cards. There's a 1977 Don Sutton. Uh, there's Mookie Betts from Diamond Kings. And there's some football cards here, too. Seventy four Lou Brock next to a seventy three Rod Carew. Um, on the same second floor, kind of wind your way over to the back of the building. There's this one booth that has um, no baseball cards, but there's some Munsters cards, Tales of the Crypt, Gremlins, Ghostbusters two, Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's all kinds of non sports, but there is some like football here. Beavis and Butthead, WCW Wrestling, Grease, Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all kinds of packs from, from these different um, <laughs> entertainment things. <laughs> I always like looking in this section, but I never buy anything because these are not things I collect. Uh, maybe someday I'll buy some Munsters cards. And there's a lot of uh, plastic decoration things. And on this shelf here, they have some NBA hoops stuff and Pokemon cards. Collector books. I'm not sure what those are. Looney Tunes glasses. And there, there's a lot of like Halloween stuff out at this time. Now, downstairs on the first floor, uh, near the back, 
there, there are these two cases uh, down the last aisle. Uh, and I always like to go into this one and, and look for stuff. They have a lot of packs. There's some hanger boxes. They have a bunch of blaster boxes, some hobby boxes. Prices are about comparable with eBay. Uh, you're not going to find anything at uh, regular retail price like you would at Target or Walmart. All these are like $10, $15, $20 higher. They have these bins, and I like to go through those every time I'm here. There's some supplies. And I like to I like to look through the numbered section in the rookie cards. Um, they have they have some football there too, and there's some NASCAR and basketball and soccer and Pokemon. Uh, they have this display out for Halloween. Uh, my wife picked out two bags, one for her and one for me, and they actually had uh, some Pokemon cards unopened. And uh, I probably will, uh, I don't know what I'll do with those because I don't collect them, but I'll probably just save them and like that. I have some slabs in here. Uh, this case is always locked. The other one's open. You'll have to go up to the register to get them to open this if you're interested in stuff that's in this case. You have some team packs down below. And um, as you can see, most of the sports are covered. And further down that aisle near the uh, front of the store there is like this um, display case with all these uh, old vintage stuff. And I like looking at these, but the, the prices are never enough to get me to get anything. There's a lot of expensive stuff in this case. Uh, a couple hundred dollars for, for some of these. Uh, you can see there's some really old, old stuff in there. And there's some baseballs. I apologize for the reflection off the window. There, there's lighting above, and it was kind of hard to get a video of this. Uh, so bear with me, please. The shelf below has football cards. Again, a lot of graded slabs. I don't know any, anything about football, so I couldn't tell you. I think most of the prices in here are fair. They're kind of on the high end. So if it's something you really want, it's probably not a bad deal. Again, I only came here wanting to spend like about $50, which is what I did. So I didn't buy anything from these cases. I did buy a couple cards from that bin. And they have these rack packs from 1987. Those were $2.50 each, which I thought was probably fair. A couple complete sets. Uh, this one showcases all the baseball cards, and you can see there's a lot of like relic kind of things. There's a lot of graded slabs in this one. I probably should have sh slowed down when I was filming this. There's a Ricky Henderson and an Ozzy Smith rookie back in there. Uh, some of these, not everything in here is graded. There's, there's some raw cards, too. And on the shelf next to that, there's some supplies, and there's a bunch of packs. And they also sell uh, blaster boxes, hobby boxes, and things like that in this case. These are all um, non-baseball, football and hockey, stuff like that. Uh, there's some baseball down there on that row. Uh, I did buy some packs from here like a um, half year ago, I'd say, that were off 82 Fleer and Donruss. But... They seem to have all been swooped up, so I didn't get any of those. It would be nice to see some of those because the prices were 6 bucks a pack there. Uh, here's some blaster boxes. And again, the prices here are about eBay comparable. Maybe a little less than eBay, but much higher than what you would do if you found this at Target or Walmart. Like about $10, $15 more. And this one has a lot of, like, uh, basketball cards in it. So at the end of the video, I'll go over what I found here.
So, I hope everybody enjoyed the uh, the tour of Big Valley Antique Center in uh, Milroy, Pennsylvania. You'll find that its postal address says Reedsville, which is the neighboring town. I'm not sure exactly what that area is called. I don't know if it's Milroy or Reedsville, but the exit you're getting off at on um, Route 322 is the Milroy exit. And as I understand, this place sometimes has uh, flea markets... Uh, very early in the morning on Wednesdays during the summertime, and I haven't gone to one of those, so I couldn't tell you what that's like. Uh, I tend to buy more modern cards um, at this place than I do vintage, and uh, the reason why is the higher-end vintage that they do have tends to be graded slabs, and I like to buy raw cards more often, um, and so they're really priced rather high. I think they're probably fair prices for what they are. Um, lower end vintage stuff that's like uh, cheaper stuff that's under $20. I find that their prices are kind of high for the condition they're in. Um, it, it, so I tend not to buy very much vintage. So let's go over um, what I bought and it, it tended to be mostly um, rookie cards. Um, so here we have Andrew Benintendi from 2015 Bowman Draft, and this is his first Bowman. Um, he had a pretty good year this year. Uh, his average kind of dropped when he went with the Yankees after being with the Royals, but um, I thought maybe I should pick up his cards from earlier in his career um, while they're cheap, just in case. So uh, I found that there. Um, this is Alec Bohm. Rookie card from uh, 2021 Bowman Platinum, and I guess this is an ice parallel. And um, I've liked Alec Bohm so far. Um, I know his uh, his defensive war isn't doing too good, even though I saw him make a, a pretty outstanding play in the, uh, uh, what was it, the first game of the World Series. JT Rio Muto's rookie card from 2014 Donruss the Rookies. That was one I didn't have. And here's a rated rookie for Alec Bohm from 2021 Donruss. This is an Independence Day parallel. And another Alec Bohm rookie card. This is from Topps Finest from 2021. And another Alec Bohm card uh, from uh, Panini Mosaic. This is debuts. It's a green parallel from 2021. This is a Randy Rose Arena rookie card from Topps Update 2020. Um, I was a little hesitant about buying a Rose Arena card, so I, I didn't know much about them. Understand he won the, won the Rookie of the Year, Um Let's see, what year was that? In uh, 2019? Was that it? No, 2020? And, um, or 2021, actually. Sorry. I'm really not paying attention. Um, and he looked like he was, he was struggling this year, but he finished pretty good. And his numbers look comparable to his rookie year, so I thought maybe I'd better buy some of his cards. This is another Rose Arena rookie card. This is from the 2020 Tops. Silver Pack Chrome with the 85 design. And I got a short prints of Andrew Benintendi. And let's see, this is uh, this is from the base set. Uh, another short print rookie card of Benintendi. And this is uh, fr uh, from the complete set, the factory set rookie variation. And this one is from uh, 2017 Tops Update. Uh, also has the rookie card label, and that's also a short print. Uh, another Andrew Benintendi. Uh, this is not a rookie card. This is um, from 2018 Tops. It's a silver pack uh, mojo card with the 83 design. And a 2022 Topps Chrome O'Neill Cruz rookie card. Uh, I'm not going to buy very much of 2022 uh, Topps Chrome. 
Uh, so I thought I'd at least get a couple key cards if I see them out in the wild that I don't have from uh, at the moment. Let's see, I think I opened up a second blaster box, which hasn't I haven't posted yet, but I did open one blaster box that I've already posted. I don't believe I, I came across this card, so I thought I'd pick this up. Uh, here's a Lourdes Guriel Jr. rookie card. And this is from 2018 Tops. This is a silver pack. Um, I guess a prism parallel. It doesn't look like the Mojo one. And that's on the 83 design. And the last card I bought was a 2020 Tops Gypsy Queen uh, Fortune Teller um, insert card for Luis Robert. So uh, let's have a few comments about this place before you go to it that I think might be helpful. Um, as I said, the price, there, you, there are some occasional good deals, but prices tend to be about two-thirds retail price, I'd say, overall. Um, if you're going by Beckett value, they often always fall between the two price ranges, but they lean a little more towards the retail price. Um, you could probably find some of this stuff cheaper on eBay, but it's one of those things where it's a convenience purchase. You're there, you have the card in your hand, you look it over, it looks really good. You know you could probably get it a dollar or two cheaper, but it's like, I might as well just get this while I'm here. And that's what I tend to ha tends to happen at this place. Uh, I always leave with something. Uh, I have bought vintage in the past. Uh, the best card I ever got there was a Manny Sanguian rookie from 1968. Uh, I probably paid more than I should have, but it was in really great shape. And I also bought like a couple um, uh, 68 checklists uh, that were in really great shape and unmarked. Um, but, but nothing really large. Um, I may need to really look at those cases that had the graded slabs and really look them over more closely than I have uh, and maybe do a bigger purchase in the future um, penny sleeve cards this is where I have an issue with this place there are lots of penny sleeve cards up on the second floor and there are some in the two booths downstairs and I don't have a fault with penny sleeves. The problem is the penny sleeves have the prices on a sticker on the penny sleeve. And when you take this to the register, they always take the stickers off of everything and they, they stick it on a piece of paper. And when they're taking the stickers off the penny sleeve, they're digging at it with their fingernails. And sometimes they're using this little plastic thing to try to scoop it off. And I know they're trying to be careful, but I have had a few cards that had damaged surfaces be from taking the stickers off. I don't understand the reason for this practice, but every ever since that time when I had those damaged cards, I only buy cards at this place that are in top loaders. So if any of the booth dealers are watching this video and wondering why maybe their penny sleeve cards aren't moving as much, maybe other people have noticed it a bit, I only buy them in top loaders at that place because they tend to do that. The, the exception to this is two times I bought a really big stack of singles and it, it takes them so long to take those stickers off them that they eventually give up on it and they put one sticker on and they write next to it on the paper that there are like 30 other cards with this price. That may be a way to get them not to take it off. I suppose you could ask them about not taking it off. I haven't done that. Um, maybe I should speak up more often about those things. But that's something, that's a comment I have about this place. Um, other than that, it's usually not very crowded. If you go, especially if you go first time, first thing in the morning when it opens up at 10 o'clock. Um, but there's a lot to look at. And as I said, um, Blaster boxes, hobby boxes, and stuff like that that are on sale here tend to be at around eBay prices. Sometimes they, they're they just slightly better than eBay, but generally they seem to match eBay prices. So if you find these things in Target and Walmart, they're going to be about $10 to $15 cheaper than what is available here. Um, 
other than that, it's a pretty nice place. Um, if you've watched this far and made it this far, I hope that this information is helpful to you. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't have any vintage this time. Um, it seems like the vintage ones I put up are more popular than um, <laughs> these kinds of things, which are rookie cards of kind of more like minor stars and not uh, not bigger stars. Um, they, they do have uh, cards from bigger stars there, but n nothing really grabbed my attention when I was looking looking through that. So thanks again for watching. Uh, sorry this video is a little bit longer than it needed to be, but there were just a few things I thought I needed to say. Uh, take care, everybody. Beep, beep.